I am comfortable where we are offensively. That's a quote from Kirby Smart on Monday talking about his offense. Now, I know Georgia fans are going to be wondering, you know, what's he talking about, right? Georgia's offense has come out slow for the first three games of the season, and it just hasn't seemed as crisp and as efficient as they have, you know, with Todd Munkin and Stetson Bennett running the Georgia offense. This offense is not bad at all, and I think Georgia fans are maybe going a little overboard. I know people want to blame Mike Bobo for the slow uh, start that they've had. Some people want to blame Carson Beck, but you know, Kirby said, we're doing the same things we have for the past two years. Listen to this. He said, quote, the offense that we've played this year is the exact same offense as we've played for the last three years. Look at the plays. Anybody that knows football, he loves to do that. I anyone who knows football knows this and this and this. Anybody who knows football would tell you that the plays are the same. Our execution in the red area hasn't been great. Yeah, no kidding. And hasn't scored as many points. We haven't been as explosive and as dynamic. And some of that has to do with the players being out. Some of it has to do with executing. But we're very comfortable where we are offensively. So Kirby Smart is not worried nearly as much about the offense as other Georgia fans out there, right? Now, maybe it's because his buddy, Mike Bobo, was running the offense, and that's the guy that he trusted to come in after Tom Munkin, who is the best Georgia offensive coordinator ever. I mean, that's that's a fact. And when you replace the best whoever to do whatever with a guy like Mike Bobo, who has had his moments in the past, um, the Georgia fans are just, a lot of them are, are not going to like Mike Bobo no matter what he does, right? But Kirby went to bat for him and Carson Beck uh, on, on Monday. And he, the biggest weakness on the offense right now isn't their inability to move the ball because they are moving the ball. It's scoring in the red zone. Now, is that a Mike Bobo thing? Is that a Carson Beck thing? Uh, I'm, it may be a little bit. I mean, Stetson's ability to run, even though Carson Beck has rushed for a touchdown this year, was lethal. It was deadly. It was something that defenses didn't really have an answer for. And Todd Munkin had a little more finesse going on um, in the red zone. But at the end of the day, they scored touchdowns. The only way George is going to lose a game this year is if they turn the ball over and settle for field goals. And like Dean Leggy said earlier this week, uh, you know, as it relates to the kicking issues, if you score touchdowns, you're not going to kick field goals and you're not going to miss field goals, right? Those go hand in hand. Touchdowns and field goals don't go together. You got to score touchdowns. And Georgia was down at the half because of their inability to score touchdowns in the red zone. They were moving the ball. And yes, they do need more explosiveness, right? That's what Georgia fans are used to seeing. I mean, Stetson was slinging it around all the time. And you know, they did have guys like DeAndre Swift um, and Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle, you know, years ago now, but they could take off for a 50, 60 yard run. I'm not sure they have a back. Actually, I don't think they have a back on the roster. Good day. Um, but Kirby went on to say this about the offense. I'm very pleased with where things are. I'm not panicking in any kind of way because South Carolina has a good team and we're figuring out who we are. We're figuring out who we are with our identity. And I think our coaching staff and players uh, and complete organization are doing a great job. You guys aren't happy with the results, but I'm very happy with the way our guys fought back and came back and overcame. Yeah, uh, you scored when you needed to. You moved the ball and put points up on the board when you needed to. Defensively, you made stops when you needed to. That's what has to happen um, when you're trying to make it come from behind win, right, in the second half. But they've got to start off hot offensively, and maybe that is uh, it's a coaching thing for sure. Kirby's got to get his guys ready. Mike Bobo has to script a better 7-10 to 10 plays to start the game. Uh, you know, normally it's easier to score on your first drive of the game because you've been practicing those plays all week. They're already scripted. And if you don't score then, then you have to make adjustments on the fly, figure out what's going to work. But the fact that they're not scoring early with kind of what they practiced and planned for all week, then they have to kind of go against that and, you know, do something different in the second half to move the ball it's not ideal. He went and said this, who we are is a 3-0 team that has played three imperfect games. I'm still looking for the first perfect one. Georgia didn't play a perfect game until TCU, final game of the season, right? You can make the fact, or you can make the point that they were outstanding against Oregon. I mean, they beat their brains in and they did, I think two weeks later against South Carolina, just beat their brains in over and over and over, just shoved their face in the ground, rubbed their face in the dirt. They're not doing that to teams right now. Um, 
if you look at the scoreboard, yeah, they did it the first two weeks against uh, Cupcake 1 and Cupcake 2, right? At, at Ball State, UT Martin, right? No one cares. No one cares. This is about what you're doing against South Carolina. Not a rival, but this offense has got to get it together for the Auburn game coming up, for the Florida game coming up. Tennessee is not as good as maybe a lot of people thought. They're going to be still lingering there, maybe. Their season might be over at the end of the uh, – come November. I, I don't know, but they got to play a lot better. But if you're Georgia, the defense is, is playing well, very well. They're one of the best defenses in college football. And you're seeing the flashes offensively. Dejan Edwards coming back was massive. Uh, but Carson Beck, I think, is playing better than people think. Here's what Kirby had to say about Carson Beck on Monday. Carson's done a good job. Again, I don't know what you guys write, read, or hear because you listen to a lot more than I do. Kirby, we know you're on dog post, big dog. We know you're on dog post. You don't have to say that. Um, like, I go by this week of practice, his preparation, his execution, and I'm very pleased with that. I'm, I'm, I'm reading his quotes off my laptop right now. I'm, just, I'm not looking down at my feet. I do have my laptop here. So these are direct quotes that you're getting. Um... Nobody was asking about Carson Beck for two years. Yeah, because he was the backup. And I think people did ask about Carson Beck, especially when there was, you know, right before that UAB game, People, a lot of people were asking about Carson Beck, but you didn't start him. You started Stetson. So no one's going to ask about Carson Beck. Anyway, uh, nobody's asked about Carson Beck for two years, but he was out there doing the same thing he's doing now. He was getting better. And that allowed for a smooth transition. Like the fact that he was hearing the same exact plays, the same exact calls, and everybody think it's, Everyone thinks it's some kind of different offense. It's the exact same. It's not different. Kirby's basically saying, well, we haven't changed anything. From Todd Munkin to Mike Bobo to Stetson Bennett to Carson Beck, we haven't changed anything. This is an execution deal. But that, you still have to blame someone. You have to criticize someone for the red zone issues. You got to blame Kirby. got to blame Bobo, um, the, the offensive line, the receivers. Someone's got to be to blame because they were dominant in the red zone for the last two years. First of three games this season, not so much. Um, he goes on to say, because he, he loved this question apparently, um, he's transitioned well because of the fact that he's in the offense that he's been in, and his strengths are different from Stetson's. I mean, the one thing he's really good at, he was a great baseball player. The guy catches the ball uh, and gets it out of his hand and is very accurate. That's baseball. That's boom, boom, boom. He can do that. You know, he does that well, and he's been very pleased with what he's done. And we got to get better results, that's for sure. But I'm certainly pleased with what both of them have done. Talk about Mike Bobo and Carson Beck. And they're going to average close to 40 points uh, this season. They need a big game against UAB because UAB can't play defense. They can score a little bit. And I think they'll score about 10 points, maybe 13 points uh, against Georgia. But they're not slowing anyone down. There's no reason why Georgia cannot get out to a fast start in this ball game against a UAB team that can't stop anybody. Um, Carson Beck should have a good game. They shouldn't need Dejan Edwards. He's their best back right now, but uh, as far as the running backs goes, they're banged up. This is the most banged up Georgia team I've ever seen in my life, probably. Definitely since I've covered it, but Kendall Milton's banged up. Roger Robinson's banged up. They need Dejan Edwards. They need Cash Jones. They need Dylan Bell. Andrew Paul didn't play for a reason, right? He's not 100%. So Carson needs that run game, and he needs the receivers to step up. Lad McConkey will come back eventually. They don't need him this week. Get him back for Auburn uh, is what the goal should be. But you got Rod Rod Thomas stepping up. Brock Bowers is still, I think, trying to get to 100%. He's not 100% right now. Uh, we're, he's still catching a decent amount of passes. He's still a go-to guy. He's still probably the best player on the field, but it doesn't look like he's 100% either. Um, so the weapons are there. The offensive line is there. They should have a big game offensively. Um, even with the backups coming in, you would like to see Georgia get over 50 points. But what you really want to see is efficiency in the red zone. No field goal attempts. Um, that's it, it, just that's not going to cut it later on in the season when you need to score touchdowns. You got to figure that out now. And UAB is a get right game. Whatever is not working right now, get that cleaned up for UAB. But as far as the offense goes, I know Georgia fans are complaining a little bit about the offense, and, and that's their right. It does not look as efficient and as crisp as it did the last two years. And you want to know why, right? You want to point the finger at someone. I get it. But it looks like Kirby Smart is not worried about it at all. He thinks Mike Bobo is doing just fine. He thinks Carson's playing just fine. And if you've been paying attention, all of you couch coaches out there, Georgia hasn't done anything different. That's what he said. He said, we're doing the exact same thing we have 
the last few years. We're, we're doing us. We just have a different quarterback and a different offensive coordinator, but the strategy hasn't changed. Kirby Smart, totally cool with where the offense is right now, uh, but I do think that they need a big performance from UAB as they enter you know, a, a long stretch of SEC games. Y'all, thanks for watching this video. As always, hope you learned something. You can read all this and much more over on Dog Post. Uh, sign up to our free newsletter. That link is right down below. Click that uh, so you can check us out over on the website. Thanks for watching this video. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you over on the website.